Hello and welcome. My name is Regina Scott. I'm an associate software engineer on the OpenShift GitOps team at Red Hat. Today, I'm going to be walking you through some of the changes in the OpenShift GitOps operator in OpenShift 4.9 and 4.10. The changes in 4.9 are some additions to the UI, and 4.10 is mostly some bug fixes and code cleanup. So just a heads up, if you're already on 4.9, going up to 4.10, you may not notice a lot of changes in this regards, which is why these are being recorded together as one video. The cluster I'm on today is a 4.10 cluster, and without further ado, let's begin. So the first thing we're going to be doing is generating some Git manifests using CAM. CAM is a CLI tool, and it's an acronym that stands for Kubernetes Application Manager, and we use it to interact with our GitOps repos. So first, what we need to do is log in through our terminal. So you go to kubeadmin at the top and copy the login command. and paste that into your terminal. Next, what we're gonna do is going to install the GitOps operator. So we'll go back and go into Operator Hub under the Administrator view. And we're going to type in GitOps here and find Red Hat OpenShift GitOps. And now we're going to install this using the default installation options. Once that in has installed successfully, you're going to go back to Operator Hub and you're going to install the OpenShift Pipelines operator, uh, also using the same defaults there. So now that we have the Pipelines operator installed, it's time to do our CAM bootstrapping command. So I'll be using GitHub as my Git service for this demo, but this will also work for GitLab. And I'm going to be using a public repo, but this will also work for private repos in GitHub and GitLab as well. So in this bootstrapping command, which I'm pasting here, first we have an example of a service repo called Taxi, which contains the source code, deployment manifests, and the CICD pipelines for our demo Taxi application. Our GitOps repo URL is just the URL where our manifests are going to be created. And I'm calling it GitOps demo, but you can call this anything you want. If you already have this repo in existence, however, then this command will fail. Uh, as you can see, uh, this is where it would be if it was in existence, but it is not. Uh, the Docker config JSON is something that I set up already in Quay. I have a repo in Quay called Taxi and I gave a robot account right access to it. So when I run my CAM bootstrapping command, the CD pipeline is going to build an image of Taxi and push it to this repo in Quay. And then I downloaded my Docker config for it and I just have it in my downloads folder. So it's getting that information from there. Our Git host access token is a token that I have in my account that should have right access to my Git account. Output is just the location of the file that will be created from the output of this CAM bootstrapping command. It'll contain all of my Git manifests and it should be the same as what will be created in my GitOps repo, URL repo in GitHub that we just talked about above. I'm also specifying that this push to Git is true so that it'll push that GitOps repo URL content to Git uh, and I won't have to do that manually. And lastly, the overwrite argument is to specify that if anything is already located in the output test folder, that it's okay to overwrite it. And before we run this command, I'm just going to show you really quick under developer view, under environments, uh, which is where your GitOps UI will be, uh, we can see that there are no GitOps manifests URL found. So now let's run our bootstrapping command. And it's been successfully created. So now that that's successful, we can go back into GitHub, refresh this page, and we can see that our manifests have been created in this repo. Okay, so now you're gonna go back to your terminal and we're gonna CD into the directory that we just created, which is output test. Next we're going to run this command, oc apply dash k config argo cd. 
and it's going to create all these apps in Argo CD for us. Argo app, CI CD app, Dev app taxi, Dev environment, and stage environment. Now back in OpenShift, we can go to the application launcher up at the top, click on Argo CD, go through the security, and this will take us to the Argo CD login page where we can click login via OpenShift. It's been a little bit, so I need to input my credentials again. And then I'm going to click Allow Selected Permissions. And now I'm in the Argo CD app. Now I'm going to be adding a webhook. So I go into Settings, Repositories, Connect Repo using HTTPS. I'm going to input the repo URL for my GitOps manifests my username, and uh, my git token. And then I'm going to connect. It has been successful. And now I'm going to resync my apps. Uh, it'll just take a second for it to finish syncing. Now that they've all finished syncing, let's go back to OpenShift and in our environments page that used to say no GitOps manifest found, now we can see that there is a list with an application name, Git repository, environment status, and if we had the last deployment time, it would be here. Now before we're going into the details page, let's add a couple more environments and applications so that we can get a better sense of how it would look like in an, an actual production environment. So we're going to be adding a new uh, environment first. So we'll go into our terminal and we'll do this kim environment add command, give it the environment name called new environment and direct the pipelines folder to be our same output folder that we just used. So it has successfully created new environment. Now we're going to be adding a new service in new environment and I'm going to run this kim service add command. For new environment, give it the app name app bus, service name just bus. The git repo URL is a URL that I already have with this bus application and the same pipelines folder that we just used again. So it has been successfully created at environment, new environment. So now I'm going to go into VS Code and you can see these files were generated for me from Kim bootstrapping and the last two Kim commands that I ran. So I'm going to be going into new environment under environments, which is one I just created, apps, app bus, services, bus, base, and config. And then in this, I'm going to be uh, adding new files to the config folder here. Uh, the first one we're gonna add is a deployment YAML to specify how the service should be deployed. So let's create that. In this file, we're going to paste the deployment manifest. And save. Secondly, we're going to be creating the service. save that. And finally, we're going to make a customization.yaml file to reference to make references to both. Okay. Now, back in my terminal, I'm just going to do the git status. Let's add all of that, 
do a commit with a message just titled um, added new service save and then let's do git push origin main So when Argo CD sees that changes have been detected in the gate repo, it's going to automatically apply those changes to the cluster and deploy this new service. So we can see back in Argo CD, sometimes it can take a little bit, but now that we have all of our applications synced and in Argo CD, we go back to the environments page in OpenShift, and now we can see that we have a new application, AppBus, and it has our environment, which is new environment. I would just like to make a comparison real quick that this was what the application list page looked like in 4.8. So there are some changes to this. So the application name and Git repository are the same, but now instead of just a list of environments, you now get the sync status for those environments. And for last deployment, um, it is working now. So in this one, it was not. So we'll take a look at the details page for these really quick, but I'm actually gonna be switching over to a different GitOps repo that I set up with a couple more environments for each of these applications so that you get a better sense of what it looks like with more environments. Okay, so now I've switched over to this new GitOps repo um, that I had set up previously, it has a little bit more to it. So we can see here that there are three environments, dev, new environment, and prod. So let's take a closer look at this details page from the top. The page begins with uh, the application name and the GitOps manifest URL. So if we go here, You'll see that this is just the repo that we had set up earlier. Each environment has the environment name at the top as well as the cluster URL. And if it's not available, it's going to tell you that the cluster URL is not available there instead. It also tells you the sync status. Options for this can be synced, out of sync, or unknown. And this is the same sync status information that is reflected on the list page right here. So as you see, this one has three and this one has those same three. Uh, the next part is the latest revision metadata. So that contains the most recent commit message, the author and the shortened commit shot, as well as the time of the latest deployment uh, in that environment. And then lastly, under that, we have the link to Argo CD that has the environment application. Uh, and as you can see, it's drilled into dev app bus right there. Uh, if we go to this one, however, it's going to take us to new end app bus. This next section here shows the resources that are available in each of the environments. So as we added before, in in dev, we added a deployment and a services section, which uh, if you remember, were this 100 deployment and 200 service files that we added previously. Now we're gonna do something to make it go out of sync. Uh, so we're going to say we have our 200 service in uh, dev uh, for app bus. Let's say we accidentally change this to the wrong namespace. We're changing it from dev to new environment. So let's save that and we'll do, we'll push it to our Git repo so that the changes get picked up by Argo CD. Okay, so now Back in Argo CD, it should be picking up these changes. Uh, we'll just do a manual sync really quick so that it picks it up quicker. It will do it automatically, but it's only after um, a certain amount of time. So 
So as you can see now, there is a problem with the namespaces. Both new env and dev, which we changed to new env, are in the same namespace and fighting with each other, which is why they're going back and forth. So this is making um, each go in and out of sync. So that will be reflected in our details page. So if we just do a quick refresh, we'll now see that uh, dev is out of sync and our service that we have is also out of sync. And that can also be seen uh, in the list page as well. And if we hit refresh on this page, um, it should go back and forth between new env and dev. So as Argo CD is going back and forth out of sync, this is also going back and forth out of sync if you keep refreshing. The last new feature I want to show off is a little hard to force, but I'll be showing a screenshot of it instead. So if you have a resource that has a degraded status in Argo CD, um, it'll just show this little broken heart icon to let you know that it's degraded. The last thing I want to note is the differences between 4.8 and 4.9 slash 4.10 for the GitOps details page. So what I have here is an image of what it used to look like in 4.8. So you'll see that the top still has the app name and manifest file repo, but the details cards are similar in some ways, but different in many other ways. So uh, as you'll see here, the cluster URL name, uh, timestamp, and Argo CD link are all there still, but there's more commit message details um, as well. This part also changed at the bottom. So instead of showing the, the service and the image and a link to the service and the pod details, um, we're now showing the resources instead. Uh, we felt that it was better for the customer and more useful. So this concludes my presentation on GitOps in OpenShift Dev Console. I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.